Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back once again to Ride 5 for part 2 of our career mode playthrough. Now in part 1 we had the 250cc two stroke classic bikes, most of them, I think all of them were pretty much from the 1990s apart from I believe one of the Aprilas which was a 2001 model so still fairly kind of classic at this point. Um, they were absolutely great fun, they sounded awesome, they were great to race with and that was in a championship format. Now at the end of that video I said we were going to hit up some of the 600cc bikes and we're going to be using the Honda CBR600RR from 2009 which is gifted to you uh, for winning that previous championship to essentially set you up for the next event. Now I have previously beaten all four of these events. There's no championship for it so they're all single races taking you across uh, pretty much all of Europe as well as putting in a time trial at Monza. So let's get straight into it. So if we head to our tour playthrough, as you can see, we're still in Revit Up. We're with the Eurostock Sport Bike 600 Cup, and we're going to have four events for this one. Now, this is not a championship format, so there's no points to carry over to each event. As you can see, we've got the likes of Brands Hatch, once again at Valencia, but this time on a much more, I guess, overall powerful bike. We also have a first time attack, which is going to be taking place at the Temple of Speed itself, uh, Monza. And then we do have a final event, which is on a... A very strange and pretty weird track one that I personally don't think I've ever seen before which is Almeria um, once again in Spain it is a great little track though uh, but sadly the AI does seem to be pretty weak there no matter what difficulty you have them running at so we're going to do our first event which is at Brands Hatch Indie Layout we're going to be using the Honda CBR 600 RR the bike that is gifted to you as you can see I've got it upgraded to right on the limit of this event and once again we're going to load the bike up on the back of the van and get ready to tour a bunch of Europe in the likes of Great Britain, Spain and Italy. So as you can see we're going to have this nice little intro which is going to take you to the first country that we're going to be racing at and that is uh, my home country in Great Britain. As you can see you're going to get this nice little intro that kind of takes you through a bunch of landmarks. Like I said in part one it is weird that it doesn't really show off the track itself um, but again I think it's just to kind of identify the country that you're in. So Brands Hatch is going to be our first one up we've already done a race at Snetterton so this is the second of the Great Britain tracks that features in ride 5 and it's going to be on the shorter indie layout now let's have a look at some of our opponents as you can see there's a bunch of Honda 6 uh, Honda CBR 600 RRs in there as well as some Yamahas some more modern 600 uh, CBRs and then we also have the likes of Suzuki's Kawasaki's um, uh, so there is a nice little mixture of bikes that are going to be taking part in this event from many different uh, years so you've got upwards of 2018 all the way down to the likes of 2005 and such so let's see if we can get a decent start here at Brands Hatch to jump a bunch of people on the start and it was a fairly decent start you can see the other Honda uh, bogging down a little bit I would say this just seems to be the weak point of the Honda uh, most of them don't seem to get away as well as some of the um, some of the other bikes that are taking part especially the Suzuki's and some of the Yamaha seem to be absolute rockets off of the start so we come out of Druids and we're sat in at fourth place for you know most of this lap so far as you can see we're just riding behind um, this bike up here in front and we're going to try and see if we can get one down the inside which we couldn't quite and then we're going to try it once again make a little bit of contact there so we did make a bit of a hash of it we then get a nice run around the outside of the Suzuki there on the right we are just going to get that closed off as first place just dips a few wheels in the grass there um, I think both wheels uh, ended up in the grass as we go into turn one and we're going to try and get a nice run down here at Paddock Hill Bend. Again, if you can try and get a nice little exit out of there, you're going to be on a decent run up to Druids on the right hander. We can't really get it down the inside there. We're going to see if we can get it to the outside, but not quite. We do then get a decent exit much earlier on the accelerator, but we do end up bumping uh, Jones up in front here. Once again into Graham Hill Bend on the left. We get a decent exit once again as you can see we're just going to try and get it down the inside if we can get it done but it's looking like that one is once again covered off by the bike in front into the right hander this time we're going to try it all the way around the outside to see if we can get the move done and cover ourselves off and get ourselves up into first place for this three lap sprint so all of these events are pretty much sprint events um, and there's no real kind of 
you know, tie wear or anything like that. So no proper strategy. It's all about speed. We then did get attacked by, by Jones, but we do manage to give them maybe a bit of a nudge. And a nice wheelie to pop it out of that corner. And then once again, just like Graham Hill, Ben, we're going to pop it on the rear wheel and uh, just do a bit of showboating at this point. But that is going to give us first place for Brands Hatch Indy. A fairly short event, a fairly easy event, to be honest. Most of the bikes were, you know, kind of just lumbering around um, towards the end stages there. So once you're through the pack, you should win this one rather quite easily. Fastest lap as well, um, by a bit of a margin, to be quite honest, around about nine tenths faster than the second quickest lap of that event. So that gives us first place in our first single race of our career mode on the Honda CBR 600. Next up, we're going to head over, I believe, back to Valencia in Spain. So once once again, we're going to get the intro showing off a bit of Spain um, as we, you know, prepare for this event. Now, we've already been here on this exact same layout with the 250cc two strokes, but this time it's going to be much, much quicker in terms of overall pace. So again, same layout. We've seen this track in the previous part. Um, but again, it's going to be overall a much quicker event. So we're just going to have to try and learn it on a completely different bike to what we had previously. So again, should be challenging. But overall, we since we you know got a general uh, you know knowledge of this layout now, this one really shouldn't be too bad. So once again, we're going to have to hope for a decent start. It does seem like some of the other model bikes are just a bit quicker off of the start. As you can see there, um, I believe that was a Yamaha and a Suzuki uh, just getting absolutely flying starts once again. But once we get up to speed, it does seem like the Honda, um, at least with the upgrades, is the better bike. As there's a bunch of bumper bikes going on up front once again at Valencia. We're going to try it down the inside here, see if we can get anything done. Taking a bit of a nudge there and um, just kind of you know knocking us off balance as a bunch of bikes come slapping through and then we're all of a sudden going to be caught in a bit of a pack there trying to keep it nice and wide so you know we don't kind of end up in a situation where we're going to be completely off the bike so into the right hander we do get that one covered a little bit we're currently down in around about p uh, p9 i believe but we are going to try and get as many moves done as quickly as possible into the left hander trying to get it down the inside but we do end up knocking someone um, absolutely flying there so you know apologies to him but he's only an ai at the end of the day so it's not too much of an issue into this part now now this is one part of the track that i just absolutely struggle with the ai seems to be blisteringly quick but then for the right hander they just end up having to slow down far too much and most of the time get a really bad exit speed I'm trying to go for a more slow at the first part, fast on the exit, and uh, theirs is the complete opposite. So if you do get caught behind him like I did there, then, well, it completely ruins your exit speed. Now, we do have a fairly decent top speed on this Honda, so we're going to try and out-drag out another Honda CBR there. As you can see, we're going to blast ourselves all the way down the straight, getting ourselves on the back of the pack just up in front. We're then going to absolutely smash it around the outside, and we do manage to get a bunch of moves done there. So two around the outside, dip it on the inside here, see if we can get this move done on Torres there, and we do get that one done. So that brings us up into the top four, and we just have to chase down the rest of the pack. We did end up getting back onto the uh, the rest of the pack up front there, and as you can see, we're gonna make our first move there onto the left-hander here. And again, I'm just gonna absolutely butcher my line here, uh, meaning that the bike that we did overtake then went for an absolutely blistering move. Then we do end up getting a really bad exit. That's mainly because my entry was just absolutely terrible. A little bit further um, on to finish the first, uh, sorry, second lap. And we are then going to try and out drag a bunch of the Suzuki's. And uh, we do manage to get that one done. Again, top speed on this bike. Very, very good. It might not be too good on acceleration, but in terms of overall handling and its top speed, it's an absolute rocket. So we did get those moves done. We had a nice quiet end to the race, to be honest. The AI just not catching us. Uh, once we kind of overtook us, that was it. We never really had to look back. And that is going to complete our second trip to Valencia on the stock uh, Euro stock tour or whatever this is called. Um, I always forget that bit. But yes, that is our second single race done. Now it's going to be time for something a little bit different in the form of our first time attack of this entire career playthrough. 
So we're going to head over to Italy next. As you can see, we're going to get a nice little intro. It's going to take us to Italy and it's going to show us exactly what to you know, expect if we were to go on a nice little tour of Italy. Once again, just showing off some beautiful landmarks, Colosseum and all that good stuff. Now, we have been to Italy before in this playthrough, but it was actually at Mugello where we were previously. This time, we're going to be hitting up the Temple of Speed Monza. Now, this is a brilliant track. It's a very fast track. But there is plenty of places to lose a ton of time. Now you do have a gold, silver and bronze target time. And well obviously I'm going to go for the gold time. Which should be realistically obtainable. Considering we have a fully upgraded bike right on the limit um, of the actual cutoff point. To where we you know, be ineligible to enter. So it's going to take us into autopilot as we be prepared to get ourselves ready for the run down to the main straight. And once we do we're absolutely flying at 160 plus miles per hour as we have a very very tight braking point now i'd rather be more cautious into turn one it definitely wasn't the cleanest turn one and turn two so the chicane there um, but we do get a decent exit and that's going to line us up quite nicely for this right hander that just goes on for absolutely forever once again into another chicane another left right here and again we're not too quick through there but we are nice and clean which is what we wanted to do as long as we're clean through there we can make up a ton of time on the straights we get a bit of a wobble on the rear tire under braking there but we do keep it nice and clean into the right hander now we're going to head up to the next toughest section as you can see we're three temps up on my fastest lap already and this is where you can lose a ton of time now if you you know can really mess it up here and if you bounce around too much on the curves or get it absolutely awfully wide out there you can either end up off the bike or just completely ruining your time as you can see we weren't too quick through there and we've lost two temps on my previous gold lap but round in the final corner at least we know we are up on our previous gold and that should definitely give us a fairly easy gold medal as we accelerate all the way down and across the line for a 1 minute 54 Point three. So around about just under eight tenths up on the target goal time, giving us, well, our personal best so far. So there we go. That is our time attack done. Relatively simple once you learn how to, I guess, ride Monza on a, uh, on a motorbike. So it's not too bad at all. Once again, we're going to head to Spain for one of the quirkiest tracks I think I've seen in a long time in any racing game. So once again, we're going to get that lovely little intro. We're just showing us off what to expect from Spain itself self and uh, we're going to head over to Almeria now this is definitely a very kind of tight and technical course there is a massively fast straight where you come into a very hard braking zone there's just an absolutely awesome layout something completely different for what they usually see so we're going to get a start once again it's a grid start and we're going to hopefully be able to get a you know good enough start to get a few positions up and we did so this time we have a blistering start a couple of bikes tripping up over each other and that's going to take us up to p3 by the uh, sorry p4 by the time we get to turn one so we're just going to tuck in here now again this is a bit of a you know oddball track you don't see it in too many places so i'm just kind of being a bit cautious on the opening lap i don't want to kind of dive through anyone um, I'm going to kind of relatively keep it clean and sort of, you know, just tuck in, see where the bikes are going, see what lines they're taking. Obviously, each bike is going to be different. Some people are going to run it wider. Some are going to be a lot more tucked in on the inside. And uh, again, we're going to make a few moves up. So we're going to sit behind P1 and have to begin to chase them down again because I'm not too used to this circuit. I'm mainly just seeing where they're going so I can plan that my laps ahead. Again, a three lap sprint no tire wear so we don't have to worry about any kind of long-term strategy we can just absolutely bolster the wall it and just hope for the best and you know try and get this uh, like this last single race essentially just absolutely smashed out of the park so coming up to here you've got this left hand and it looks very very quick but you actually have to get on the brakes very very early now it's a really awkward section if you get it wrong you're gonna know about it and well i pretty much every time get it wrong so again first place is going to manage to get a bit of a gap on us there but we do come to that massive long straight i was talking about and this is realistically where this honda should absolutely push us all the way to the end of the straight for a very tight right hander before heading slightly to the left and crossing the line once again so we do 
to take P1 on the straight, just managing to out drag that bike there into the very hard braking zone. Again, it's going to be a bit of a weird one because it's sort of blind to the left. So if you get it lined up wrong like I did there, you can end up with a nice little wobble or just end up going kind of more straight on into the gravel and spending, you know, half of a lap uh, sat on your arse in there. So that's not what you want to do. Now, overall, the AI does seem very, very weak here. As you can see, even when I'm not putting in the best laps, I'm just absolutely gapping them. Um, a lot more than I did at any other track. Maybe it's just because the layout is a little bit awkward, and I, I, you know I'm fully admitting that it's a cool layout, but it's definitely um, a bit awkward to kind of get used to. But I'm sure once you do, you can be putting some amazing laps here. But the AI definitely um, at probably at the weakest I've ever seen them um, around this track. So yeah, not too much of a challenge from them, and that did set us up for a nice easy win. Overall though, a very, very cool track, so I really did enjoy my time here, but as you can see, even with some terrible laps, we are gapping the AI by over five seconds. It's going to take them an eternity to get themselves over the line so we can see how they did. Whereas around about three seconds a lap faster than absolutely anyone, and they, those are people on fully upgraded bikes, so 700 limit, and there is a bike there on the 700 limit, so yeah, not really too much of a, a challenge with the AI. Again, it's all about kind of, if you're unsure or just follow them around see where they're going and then lap two onwards you can really just go for a full blast around so that is it that is our four single events done we smashed out Brands Hatch, we smashed out Valencia once again, and Almira, as well as our first time attack. Now, next up in my next episode, as you can see, we have our first head-to-head -head event. This is, a um, again, on the C 600cc sport bikes. This is going to be against Charles Nolan, and we're going to be heading over to the massively famous Daytona International Raceway for a bit of a different layout from what you'll usually see it if you're doing it on four wheels, um, even on the infield. So, yeah, this one's going to be absolutely awesome. Awesome. And then we'll also double that one up with a bit of a Great Britain Championship once again on the 600cc sport bikes as we head to Snetterton, Donington and Autumn Park for another championship, this time to round up these 600 sport bikes. So there we have it. Thank you so much for joining me for part two of my Ride 5 playthrough. I'll try and get part three up tomorrow. I also have a GT7 video schedule for later on today. Then I'll be taking in the results from the poll to just kind of see what you guys want for the next week of the channel. I thought I'd give you guys the option instead of me just taking entire control. It's always cool to see what you know ideas and things you want to see. At least then I kind of know what I can you know kind of make specifically for you guys that is mainly in terms of the GT7 content whilst it's kind of in between updates to kind of keep you guys interested in that as well as obviously continuing my Ride 5 um, content as well uh, we also have a bunch of racing games coming up we have like the likes of Crew, Forza and stuff so I will be covering them as well so be sure to stay tuned to be checking them out in the future thanks so much for watching I'll see you later on have a great day guys peace